It's uh, 1983, and um, I meet a gentleman named Johnny Z. And Johnny ran a little label called Megaforce Records with his wife, Marsha, and God rest their soul as well. I mean, so many people are like going these days. It's uh, oh, it's heartbreaking. Anyway, so John and I became fast colleagues. Um, and he played me uh, some vinyl. He, my brain almost stopped. He played yeah. me some vinyl that he was putting out, like um, Anthrax, Raven, and Metallica. So when John came to my office one day, he said, you know, Michael, I have this band, Raven, and they're going to be huge. And I'd like, you to, I'd like you to give me some money for them. Can you demo them for Elektra? I said, sure. I don't know. I gave him like $5,000. And he, I said, give me your five best songs. And the demos were great. But the problem was I heard Kill Em All. And I thought, I'd never heard anything like this before. Uh, it was not traditional metal. And I thought, I have to have these people in my life. Um, yeah. So to make a long story short, or maybe longer, um, I let John know that I didn't want to sign uh, Raven, that I wanted to sign Metallica. It infuriated him. And at some point, he was like, I'm suing you. I'm suing Time Warner. I'm suing Krasnow. And I was like, calm down. You know what I mean? This is all going to work out. Well, of course it worked out. And uh, uh, I guess, uh, not I guess, I'm sorry. Uh, summer of 84, the day after Hetfield's birthday, I think it was August 4th, 1984, uh, I signed them to uh, Elektra. Um, it wasn't that simple, but that night was also the night they played with Raven and Anthrax at Roseland Ballroom on West 52nd Street. And it doesn't exist, uh, Roseland, anymore, which like pisses yeah. me off because, you know, we, we uh, New York, uh, we don't have respect for, for architecture and buildings and just stuff like... Um, other cities and European cities have. Anyway, so at one point they tore down Roseland. But the point is, I did sign Metallica in 84. And uh, so, you know, I was really drunk that night, as I always was back then. And uh, I went backstage. I was hugging and kissing everybody. And they were looking at me like, okay. <laughs> and I, oh, I had met Lars previously. And uh, like maybe last, uh, the, the previous year, because I went to see them I had other business to do in San Francisco and I gave Lars my card and he had some little card that he gave me as well. So by the time 84 came around, he called me and he said, are you still interested in my band? I said, of course I am. Fast forward uh, to Roseland and um, it was really a fun night. Uh, I think they looked at me backstage like, this is the man we're going to put our lives, our, our lives into the hands of the man that we're going to put Lives into, and Lars was like, yes, this is Michael Alago from Electra. Well, after that, that night, I don't know, everybody said their goodbyes, and the next day, they were at my office at Electra. We were in the conference room. We had, uh, I tell the story all the time, we had beer and Chinese food, and I gave them all the cassettes and vinyl of artists that I thought they would like, like The Doors, The Stooges, The MC5, um, Maybe I, I might have given them the cars, like a whole host of things. So they would get a vibe of what Electra Records was like. Um, I left the conference room to get Kraz. Now he came in and, you know, he was, you know, the chairman, you know, the $10,000 suit, the, the fancy, uh, the cigar. And he was like, listen, you guys were great last night because I had him come to Roseland as well. And uh, if Michael wants you here, we want you here. And that really was the beginning of it all and mm. uh, with Metallica and Electra Records. And so how, um, while we're on the Metallica subject, like yes. how, how like, involved were you in like the creation of like you know, the, the, the early the, the early Electra Records? Were you in the studio with them? Were you, yeah. Or was it... Yeah. They they never wanted anyone in the studio with them. Uh, well, I just had to I just had to stay aware of uh, the budgets, you know. Yeah. And uh, I I would get back then. We had dats, you know, these little DATs. yeah yeah. I remember DATs. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Lars would send me dats of um, parts of songs. Uh, our relationship really began with Master of Puppets because. Yeah. Um, by the time I wound up actually pen to paper, uh, they had made Ride the Lightning and uh, 
Megaforce put it out at some point, and then we put it out. Um, okay. So the real record that you know we started uh, to work with them with was uh, Master of Puppets, which, as we all know, is an extraordinary record. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of history behind that record, both uh, good and sad. And um, so, no, they really didn't want anyone in the studio with them. But the reason I had blind faith in them was because I heard uh, and ju- um, and Justice for All. My, you know, uh, I heard Kill 'Em All. I heard Ride the Lightning, and I thought. These are young people who have a point of view, who they definitely know what they want to do in the recording studio. So I kind of um, had blind faith that this next record would be great. 